How's it going, guys? Today in this video, we're going to continue on going over the final exam review. We'll be going over the chapter 10 of the module 10 part of the final exam review. Uh, before we start on that, I do want to remind you guys that we do have the completed notes packets for all the modules for the semester on Canvas already. Uh, the completed key for the final exam review is online as well. Uh, I don't plan on going through every single problem. That's just way too much. Uh, but I will be doing kind of one problem that will relate to all the other problems. So you want to double check your work with the problems I didn't do. Uh, we have the key online already, so you can double check your uh, work there. But I'll be going over just diff all the different topics that we hit on each module, and I'll leave some problems for you guys to do uh, as well. All right. Other than that, let's go ahead and get started. Number one, we're told we need to simplify and find the domain of a function. So we have 4 minus x squared all over x minus 2. All right, so uh, for the, what we're going to do here, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to factor out a negative 1 from the top because when I do, I'm left with negative 4 plus x squared all over x minus 2, which I can rewrite as x squared minus 4 on the top all over x minus 2. And then I can see that x squared minus 4 is a difference of squares. And I can rewrite that or factor it out to get x minus 2 times x plus 2 all over x minus 2. And from here, uh, I need to figure out what our domain of the function is. So, and to figure out our domain, we need to know what our excluded values are, are going to be. Or in other words, what values of x can we not be? So what I'm going to do is before I cancel anything out and completely simplify it, I'm going to figure out every x value that sets the denominator equal to zero. That's going to be all my excluded values. All right? So for number one, my excluded values are just going to be two. That's the only value of x that will make the whole uh, fraction all over zero, make the whole denominator equal to zero. So that's the only x value that cannot equal. So that means my domain will be every x value such that x does not equal 2. All right, and then once I do that, I can cancel stuff out, and I see I have an x minus 2 on the top and bottom, so they cancel out, so I'm just left with a negative 1 times an x plus 2. And that right there is going to be my uh, simplified function of the expression. All right? On to number three. So on this problem, uh, we're asked to write an equivalent rational expression. We're going to write 5x over x minus 2 with a denominator of x minus 2 times x plus 7. So you have 5x all over x minus 2. And what we want is we want to rewrite this, uh, this rational expression. We want, to have, we want to rewrite it with a denominator of x minus 2 times x plus 7. Uh, but we want to keep the value the same. Right? We want to make sure it's equivalent. We need to make sure it has the same uh, value. So if we look at the denominator between uh, what we have and what we want, what we're missing is that x plus 7, right? Only thing we're missing is the x plus 7 on the bottom. So we need to multiply the bottom by x plus 7 to get the denominator that we want. But we also said we need to make sure that it's equivalent or it has the same value. So if you multiply the bottom by x plus 7, we also have to multiply the top by x plus 7, since x plus 7 divided by x plus 7 is just 1. And if you multiply anything with 1, you get the same thing. So we're technically just multiplying this fraction with 1, but we're getting the denominator that we want. So we end up with 5x times x plus 7 on the top, all over x minus 2 times x plus 7. We didn't change the value of the uh, function. But we got the denominator that we wanted, so it's the same exact rational expression, just with a different denominator, and it's going to look a little different. But it's the same exact thing, and that's how you do it. All right? So on to number five, um, we're asked to simplify the rational expression and identify excluded values. So what we have is 2x squared plus 7x plus 6 all over... 3x squared plus 8x plus 4 times x plus 3. 
So if you want to simplify a rational expression, we need to make sure the top and the bottom are factored out. All right? So I'm going to factor out the top first. And for the top, I have 2x squared plus 7x plus 6. And since my a value is not 1, that means I have to figure out what factors of my a times my c or my 2 times my 6, which is 12. What factors of 12 add up to give me my b value of 7? In this case, that's 4 and 3. 4 times 3 gives me 12, and 4 plus 3 gives me 7. So what I'm going to do is I can either do the split the middle term method or put it into a box. I'm going to put it into a box. And when I do that, the top left corner is your ax squared, so 2x squared. The diagonal are the two terms we just found, 4x and 3x. And the bottom right is your c value. It's not, it's not 7, it's your c value, which is 6. And what we're going to do, find the GCF of the first row, it's 2x. And then we're going to multiply into the uh, box. So 2x times what gives you 2x squared? That's x. 2x times what gives you 4x? That's 2. And then x times what gives you 3x? That's 3. And we can double check. 3 times 2 does give us 6. So the factors we have on the outside are our factors. So for 2x squared plus 7x plus 6, that's going to factor out into x plus 2 times 2x plus 3. And now I'm going to do the same thing with 3x squared plus 8x plus 4 times x plus 3. So the x plus 3 is already factored out. I don't need to deal with that. But this 3x squared plus 8x plus 4, that needs to be factored out. So it's the same thing. Uh, my a value is not 1, so I have to find factors of my a times my c, or in this case, my 3 times my 4, which is 12 again. I need factors of 12 that add up to give me 8. And that's going to be 6 and 2. 6 times 2 gives me a positive 12, and 6 plus 2 gives me a positive 8. So what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to do the split the middle term method. Uh, if you like the box method more, you can do it. It doesn't really matter. They're both just two different ways to do the same thing. So 3x squared plus 8x plus 4 is now going to be 3x squared plus 6x plus 2x plus 4. We're going to combine like terms. We're not combine like terms, but uh, pair up uh, our terms. Find the GCF. We have 3x left with x plus 2. And then we have 2 we're left with x plus 2 as well. So this factors out into 3x plus 2 times x plus 2. So I can rewrite that on the bottom over here. 3x plus 2 times x plus 2. That's that part of the denominator. And I cannot forget about the x plus 3. That's still part of it. So I'm going to bring that down as well. So from here, before I cancel anything out, uh, you should always try to find your excluded values after you factor out the top and the bottom. All right, that's just my personal opinion. I think it's better just because when you're trying to figure out your excluded values after you cancel out uh, factors from the top and the bottom, uh, there's a chance you're going to end up forgetting about the factor that you canceled out. So in my opinion, after you factor out the top and the bottom, that's the best time to figure out your excluded values before you cancel anything out because find your excluded values, all you have to do is set every term in the denominator equal to zero and solve that out. And if you cancel out a term from the bottom, uh, there is a chance that you might forget it. So in my opinion, once you factor out everything on the top and the bottom, that's the best time to figure out your excluded values. So we're going to do that now. We're going to set each factor, like I just said, on the bottom equal to zero. So 3x plus 2, when that equals zero and you solve it for x, you get negative 2 over 3 x plus 2, you get negative 2, and x plus 3 gives you negative 3. So these are the three x values that we cannot equal since it turns the whole function to an undefined function since we're dividing by uh, 0. So these are my excluded values. And now that I figure out my excluded values, now I'm going to actually try to reduce this function and simplify it as much as I can. So I'm going to see if there's any factors from the top and the bottom that I can cancel out. And I see that I have, I have an x plus 2 on the top and bottom. They cancel out. So I'm left with 2x plus 3 on the top and 3x plus 2 times x plus 3 on the bottom. 
and that's going to be my reduced function uh, for this problem. And that's also my excluded value. All right. Let's keep on going. Uh, now we're on to number seven. And for number seven, uh, we're told to add or subtract and then identify any excluded values and simplify your answer. Uh, so I'm going to rewrite this just to make it a little bigger. At three all over x squared plus 2x plus 1 plus x squared on the top all over x squared plus x. All right? So uh, when we're trying to add or subtract any type of fraction, even if these are rational expressions, they're still fractions, what we need to do is we need to make sure the denominators are the same. All right? We can only add fractions if the bottoms or the denominators are the same. So it's the same thing with rational expressions since they are technically still fractions. We need to make sure the denominators are the same. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out each, uh, each fraction or each rational expression so I can figure out what my common denominator is going to be. So for the first one, I have 3, that is a factor out. And on the bottom, I have x squared plus 2x plus 1. My a value here is 1. So I need to figure out uh, factors of my constant of 1 that add up to give me 2. And that's just x plus 1, x plus 1. And then for x squared, all over x squared plus x, I can just bring down the x squared. And for the bottom, it has a GCF of x. So you can factor out an x, and I'm left with x times x plus 1. So these are my factored forms of both rational expressions or both fractions. So from here, I'm going to figure out what my common denominator is going to be. And to do that, what I like to do is I like to see what's missing uh, in each denominator. So if I look at 3 all over x plus 1 times x plus 1, and I compare that denominator with the second denominator, I can see that it doesn't have the x, it doesn't have the x that the second denominator has. So that means I'm going to multiply that uh, fraction with what I'm missing. I'm missing an x, so I'm going to multiply the bottom with an x. And when I multiply the bottom with, I have to multiply the top with because I need to make sure the value stays the same. So I'm missing an x compared to the, the uh, second fraction or second rational expression. I'm going to multiply the first fraction with that x over x. I'm going to multiply it with what I'm missing. And then for the second fraction, I have x squared all over x times x plus 1. I can see that I only have 1 x plus 1 when I need 2. So I'm going to multiply the top and bottom by x plus 1 as well. So I can make sure I have everything that the other one has as well. So when I do that, I get 3x all over x times x plus 1. That's just x plus 1 squared plus x squared times x plus 1, all over x times x plus 1 squared as well. So from here, I'm going to combine these. I get 3x plus, I'm going to distribute out this x squared. So I get x cubed plus x squared, right? x squared times x is x cubed. x squared plus, uh, times 1 is x squared, all over the common denominator of x times x plus 1 squared. And now, uh, from here, before I cancel anything out, or rather before I do that, this kind of factor out the top and bottom. This uh, factored out this whole uh, rational expression. The top has a GCF of x, so I can factor out an x and be left with x squared plus x plus 3 all over uh, x times x plus 1 squared. It doesn't factor out, so I'm just going to leave it like that. So x times x plus 1 squared. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, before actually before I cancel anything out, because uh, I can't cancel out the x on the top and the bottom, what I'm going to do is I'm going to list out my excluded values. All right, so my excluded values are the same thing. It's every x value that's the denominator equal to 0. Uh, so I'm going to set each factor equal to 0, so x and x plus 1 squared. So the two x values that set my whole denominator equal to 0 will be 0 and negative 1. Those are my two x values, but I'll set the whole denominator equal to 0, so those are my two excluded values. All right, and then for the top, or rather, now we can cancel stuff out. So these x's both cancel out. We have x on the top, x on the bottom, so they cancel out. So I'm left with 
x squared plus x plus 3 on the top, all over x plus 1 squared, and x squared plus x plus 3, it uh, doesn't factor out anymore. There's no factors of 3 that add up to give you 1. So in this case, uh, that's the simplified answer. That's a simplified expression. And that's going to be the answer for number, I believe it's 7. All right? So on to number 9. On number 9, we're told to find the products and, and uh, any excluded values. So when we're multiplying uh, rational expressions, it's actually going to be much easier than uh, adding and subtracting them because all we have to do, or rather, we don't have to find a common denominator. I think that's the easier way to put it. We don't have to find a common denominator, so all we're going to do is factor out the top and the bottom. Uh, I don't want to spend too much time on factoring it, but 3x squared all over x squared minus 2x minus 8 multiplied with 2x squared minus 6x minus 20 all over x squared minus 3x minus 10. So what I'm going to do is factor this out as much as I can uh, for the top. I get, this is going to say 3x squared, and then 2x squared minus 6x minus 20. That, we can factor out a 2 and be left with x squared minus 3x minus 10 all over x squared minus 3x minus 10, and x squared minus 2x minus 8. We'll factor out into x minus 4 and x plus 2. All right? So I can see that these can cancel out. Like I said before, I don't want to cancel anything out until I figure out all my excluded values. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, factor this out anyway. So any factors of negative 10 that add up give me positive 3 for both the top and the bottom. And that's going to be negative 5 and positive 2. Negative 5 times 2 is, gives us negative 10. And negative 5 plus 2 gives me negative 3. So let's go ahead and rewrite all of this. Times 2. And we said x minus 5. x plus 2. And bottom is also x minus 5. x plus 2. So from here, I'm going to figure out my excluded values. It's just every single x value to turn the bottom to 0, or is it every factor on the denominator equal to 0? So I get 4, negative 2, 5, and negative 2 again. Uh, I don't need to write it twice, so just 4, negative 2, and 5. These are all my excluded values. And now I need to simplify this expression. I'm going to cancel out anything that I can cancel out. And like we saw before, these were the same exact uh, Quadratic, so the x minus 5 on the top and the bottom cancel out, and the x plus 2 on the top and the bottom also cancel out. So what I'm left with is this 2 times 3x squared, which will just give me 6x squared on the top, all over x minus 4 times x plus 2. So that's going to be my um, simplified expression and my excluded values for number 9. All right, on to number 11. And for this problem, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, divide these two rational expressions. So dividing rational expressions is very similar to multiplying rational expressions, if you remember. It's the same thing as multiplying, or sorry, dividing uh, fractions. You just switch the second number and multiply, right? So that's what we're going to do. We have x minus 4 squared all over x squared minus 2x minus 8 divided by x squared plus 10x plus 16 all over x squared. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor this out and then I'm going to flip the second number and then I'll have that multiplication problem. So for the first fraction, x minus 4 squared is already factored out. I'm going to leave it alone. Then x squared minus 2x minus 8, uh, that's going to factor out into x minus 4, x plus 2. Factors of negative 8 that add up to give you negative 2. Negative 4 and positive 2 add up to give you negative 8, add up to give you negative 2. That's going to be divided. x squared plus 10x plus 16 
Uh, any factors of 16, the add will give you 10. That's going to be x plus 8 and x plus 2. Or rather, 8 and 2, which will give me x plus 8 and x plus 2. If the bottom stays the same, add x squared, that's already factored down. You can't do anything else with it. So this is my factor form for both fractions. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to list out all my excluded values. Before, or after, let's just go ahead and flip it first and turn it to the multiplication problem, and then we'll list out our excluded values. It doesn't really matter too much, but let's just make it a multiplication problem first so we can see exactly why we have all these excluded values. Multiplied by x squared all over x plus 8 times x plus 2. There we go. So, like I said, we're we change a division problem to a multiplication problem by flipping the second number and changing it from a division to a multiplication. All right? So, uh, now that we got to this point here, before we start uh, multiplying everything together, this is, the part, this is the part where I like to figure out my excluded values. All right? And that's because, since this is a division problem, all my excluded values are going to come from is x minus 4 times x plus 2, is x plus 8 times x plus 2, and also the, this x squared right there. And that's because the x squared used to be a denominator when it was a division problem, but when we flip the second number, the numerator becomes the denominator, and the denominator becomes the numerator. So both of these terms right here can both set the uh, whole second fraction into a zero, depending on which part of the problem we're on. So we need to take all of that into account. So all three of these uh, parts of the fractions are all going to give you my excluded values. So my excluded values, uh, let's do that over here on the side, and come back to it later. X cannot equal this positive 4 from X minus 4. Cannot equal a negative 2 because of this X plus 2. Cannot equal a negative 8 because of that X plus 8. Uh, cannot equal negative 2 because of the x plus 2. We already have that written down, so we won't write it again. And we cannot equal 0 because of this x squared, because it used to be in the denom denominator. So we have to take that into account. So my excluded values are 4, negative 2, negative 8, and 0. These are my excluded values. And now that I have my excluded values, this is when I'm going to actually um, start canceling stuff out and simplifying my problem. All right, so when I look over here, I see I have an x plus 4 here, and on the bottom, I can cancel these out. So I get rid of that uh, square. There's only going to be one of them left uh, over now, and cancel out the x minus 4 on the bottom. All right, so when I do that, what I'm left with is x squared times x minus 4 on the top, all over x plus 2. I have that two times, so that's squared times x plus 8. There's nothing else we can really cancel out. So this is giving me my simplified version of the problem, and that's going to be my answer. So the biggest thing here when it comes to division compared to multiplication is knowing that there's three parts of the fractions we get our excluded values from. The denominator of the first one of the first fraction, and the denominator and the numerator of the second fraction. Because that second fraction uh, both sides of the fraction was a denominator at one point in the problem. All right? All right, so let's keep on going. Uh, now we have number 17. We're going to solve each rational expression algebraically. We're going to list um, excluded values. So what we're going to do, uh, for number 17, what we can do, we can just cross-multiply this. 3x plus 7 multiplied by 2x minus 10 is going to equal... 5x plus 17 times x minus 5. And like the name says, cross multiplication, you're literally just multiplying across. So 3x minus 7 times 2x minus 10, and 5x plus 17 times x minus 5. So we're going to multiply this all out. For 3x plus 7 times 2x minus 10, that is going to end up giving us 6x squared minus 16x minus 70, and that's going to equal 5x squared minus 8x minus 85. And then we're just going to add like terms. I'm not going to spend too much time with this. Uh, we're going to add like terms, set it equal to 0 so we can factor this out. So we add like terms, we end up getting x squared 
minus 8x plus 15 equals 0. Just add them all up, set the whole quadratic equal to 0. Now we can factor this out. And we can see, oh, when we factor this out, we end up getting x minus 5 and x minus 3. Factors of uh, positive 15 that give you negative 8 is negative 5 and negative 3. So that's what I says this whole thing equal to 0. So my factors are 5 and x equals 3. But we need to make sure uh, that both of these answers actually work. It's something that I forgot to do. It was I forgot to actually check my excluded values from the very beginning. From the very beginning of, uh, of the problem, they gave us uh, the whole problem in factored form, so we didn't really have much to do. But I need to set each denominator equal to 0 to make sure uh, I don't put an answer that's my excluded value. So for 3x plus uh, 7 all over x minus 5, when x is 5, that sets the denominator equal to 0, so that's an excluded value. x cannot equal 5. And then for 2x minus 10, when I set that equal to 0, I get uh, positive 5 again. So in this case, my excluded value is just x equals 5. And when I compare that excluded value to my two answers right here, I can see that uh, x equals 5 was one of my solutions. But like we just saw, it's an excluded value. It turns the whole thing into zero, or sorry, not zero, but turns the whole thing into an undefined function. So it cannot be a solution. So my answer for number 17 is just x equals 3. All right? And now for number 18, what we're going to do here, um, we need to figure out what our excluded, or sorry, not our excluded value, we need to figure out what our LCD is going to be for number 18. We have three fractions, so we need to figure out what our LCD is going to be so we can uh, add them all together. So I'm going to actually rewrite this down below, give myself a little more room. So the problem was 2x minus 7 all over x minus 6 plus x over 2 equals 5 all over, so ugly 5, 5 all over x minus 6. All right? So that's the problem, and what I need to do is I need to figure out what my LC is going to be. Or before we do that, let's actually figure out our, our um, excluded value before I forget to do that again. I can see with each of these denominators, x cannot equal 6, because that will set both of these fractions into uh, a fraction over 0 or an undefined function. We cannot have that, so x cannot equal uh, 6, because it sets the denominator of both those fractions equal to 0. But what I need to do now is I need to figure out what my LCD is going to be. And I can see that my LCD is just going to be 2 times x minus 6. Right? I can multiply the, the, uh, the first fraction right here, this last one right here, by 2 on the bottom, 2 over 2 on the top and bottom. And I can multiply this x over 2 by x minus 6 to give me the same LCD for all these problems. All right? So... I'm going to multiply each one of these by my LCD. So 2x minus 7 all over x minus 6 multiplied by 2 times x minus 6. Uh, yeah, 2 times x minus 6 plus x times my LCD of 2 times x minus 6 all that over, uh, over 2, sorry, not x. So 2, all right, x all over 2, and we're multiplying that with our LCD of 2x minus 6. There we go. And that's all going to equal 5 over x minus 6 times the LCD of 2 times x minus 6. So this is a little different. Uh, we need to figure out LCD to multiply each uh, term with the LCD. I think I worded that a little wrong in the beginning. But we're multiplying each fraction with the LCD. So we can get rid of that denominator, all right? So we can actually solve it out. Our LCD we figured out is 2 times x minus 6. So now that we have our LCD, we multiply each fraction by that LCD, so we can get rid of that denominator, all right? So for the first fraction right here, the x minus 6 and the x minus 6 cancel out. So we're left with 2x minus 7 times 2. We're going to add that with x over 2 times our LCD. These twos cancel out as well, so we're left with x times x minus 6. And that's all going to equal 5 over x minus 6 times the LCD. The x minus 6 is canceled out. 
we're left with 5 times 2. So if we distribute this all out, uh, 2x minus 7 times 2 is 4x minus 14 plus x squared minus 6x equals 10. We're going to add like terms. So x squared becomes in the beginning. Uh, six, negative 6x six with positive 4x is a minus 2x. And then I subtract 10 over to get negative 24 equals 0. It's a quadratic, and we're saying the whole thing equals 0. So now I need to factor this out. Factors of negative 24 that add up to give me positive 2 is a negative 6 and a positive 4. And that all equals 0. So my solutions are x equals 6 and negative 4. But remember from the beginning, we said that x cannot equal 6. That's an excluded value. So x equals 6 is not a solution. And my only answer is x equals negative 4. So let's keep on going. Number 19, we're going to state whether uh, each set is closed under each of the four basic operations. So for natural numbers, it is closed under addition, it's closed under subtraction, it's closed under multiplication, but it's not going to be closed under division. And that's because if we multiply, uh, say, like 2 over 3, that's 2 thirds, and that's not a natural number, so it's not going to work out. For integers, uh, it's going to be similar. It's closed under uh, addition, subtraction, multiplication. But again, it's not closed under uh, integers. And that's because if you divide it 2 by 3 again, it's going to be 2 thirds. 2 thirds is not an integer. So it's not going to work for division. Uh, rational numbers, uh, it's going to be the same thing. Uh, it works under addition. It works under subtraction. It works under multiplication. And, but it does not work under rational numbers because if we divided 4 over 0, for instance, we get an a irrational number that doesn't work, so it does not work under division. Now, rational expressions, this is going to be, it's going to work for all. That's because no matter what I do, or, uh, what I do, uh, add together, subtract together, multiply together, or divide together, as long as it's a rational expression, and I, and I uh, do any of these uh, operations on them, it's still going to be in that same uh, set. No matter what two rational expressions I add, I'm still going to be another rational expression. No matter what two rational expressions I subtract, I'm still going to be uh, in a rational expression set. No matter what two rational expressions I multiply, I'm still going to be in a rational expression set. And no matter what two rational expression uh, numbers I divide with each other, I'm still going to be a rational expression. So rational expressions are closed under all four of the basic operations. All right, now number 21. Uh, we're told a passenger train travels 392 miles in the same time that it takes a freight train to travel 322 miles. If the passenger train travels 20 miles per hour faster than the freight train, find the speed of each train. So for these problems, as long as the time of the first object equals the time of the second object, which in this case we're told they're traveling the same time uh, as each other. Uh, so that means our T1 equals our T2, the uh, time of the first train, the passenger train, will equal the time of the freight train. That means we can use the uh, equation D1 over T1 will equal D, or sorry, not T1, D1 over R1, the distance over the rate equals the distance of the second object over the rate of the second object. Right? So for the passenger train, we're told that it, uh, it, um, it's going 392 miles. So that's the distance is going 392 miles at a rate of, really, it's going to be x plus 20 because it's going faster than the freight train, and we don't know how fast the freight train is going. So we say the freight train is going at a, at a speed of x. So the freight train is going at a speed of x. We can see the passenger train is going at a speed of x plus 20 since it's going 20 miles per hour faster than the, the uh, freight train. And then for the freight train, we're told it's, tr it's uh, going a total of 322 miles at a rate that we don't know, so we're just going to call it X. Okay? So that's how you set it up. Distance 1 over rate 1 equals distance 2 over rate 2. And that only works if, or this only works, if 
both of these uh, objects are traveling at the same time. They take the same amount of time for each object, then it's distance one over rate one equals distance two over rate two. All right? So from here, what we're going to do is we're going to cross multiply again. So we end up getting 392x. Just multiply across, just like the name says. And that's going to equal 322 times x plus 20. We're going to work this out. 322x and 322 times 20 will be 6,440. We're going to add like terms. So we minus the 322 over. 70x equals 6,440. So we get the x equals 92. Divide them both by 70, you get that x equals 92. So that means the freight train, which was going at a rate of x, is going 92 miles per hour. And then the passenger train, which we said was x plus 20, is going a total of 120, 112 sorry, miles per hour. So that's going to be our two answers. All right, let's keep on going. Number 22. Number 22, we're told that Archie can complete a task in six hours. James can do it in four hours. How long will it take them to do it if they work together? So remember this. This is going to be one over the time. One or how long it took the first person to do um, a certain task plus one over T2. Or the time it took the second person to do the same task. That's going to equal one all over the combined time or the time it took them, it takes them to do the task together. So one over the time one plus one over times two equals one over the combined time. So Archie, we're told, can complete a task in six hours. So let's make that one over six. And James can do it in four hours. So let's make that one over four. And we're asked how long will it take them to do it together if they work together. That's one all over some x value that we don't know, or t or t sub c, whatever you want to call it. And this is what we need to solve for. All right? So what we're going to do is we need to figure out our LCD. Our LCD in this problem, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to multiply 6 and 4 and uh, x all together to give me 24x. That's just, it's maybe, maybe not the LCD, but it is an LCD that works. It is a common denominator anywhere that works. That's what I'm going to multiply all with to make my life a little easier. So when I do that, 1 over 6 times 24x plus 1 over 4 times 24x will equal 1 over x times 24x. All right? So what I'm going to do is I have 1 over x times 24x. I'm going to simplify this all out. This can simpl uh, simplify down into 4x. This simplifies down into 6x. This simplifies down into 24. So I get 10x equals 24, or x equals 24 over 10, which I can reduce down into 12 over 5, which is uh, going to be not about, it is 2.4. So it takes them 2.4 hours, which is about 2 hours and 24 minutes. So 2.4 hours, or... Two hours and 24 minutes. Right, tw 24, two hours and 24 minutes. Sorry, it's being a little long, being a little sloppy, but that's the answer. 2.4 hours or two hours and 24 minutes. All right? So let's keep going. We've got one last problem to do. Number 24. Uh, we're told Kelsey is kayaking on a river. She travels six miles upstream and six miles downstream in a total of four hours. Um, so it takes her four hours each way. Uh, in still water, Kelsey can travel at an average speed of four miles per hour. What's the average speed of the divers of the river's current? So we're going to figure out what the current's going to be, right? So what we're going to do here is um, we're going to use our same distance over rate formula. So as I can reread this problem, I think I read it wrong. Sorry about that. 
So 24, it's saying Kelsey's kayaking on a river. She travels six miles upstream and six miles downstream in a total of four hours. So that's actually saying uh, for her to uh, travel six miles upstream and six miles downstream. It takes her a total of four hours to do that. Six miles up, uh, stream to and downstream, all that takes her four hours. In still water, Kelsey can travel at an average speed of four miles per hour. So without any current pushing against her or pushing with her, uh, it takes, uh, she has an average speed of four, four miles per hour. And we want to figure out what the average speed of the river's current is. So a few things we need to get out of the way really quickly is that the total time it takes to do something is going to be the time it takes to do each part of that total amount. Right, so plus equals T1 plus T2. So in this case, our total time, which is four hours, is going to equal uh, the time it takes you to travel upstream and then downstream, right? And then before we fill this out, something else we need to get out the way is that time is going to equal distance over rate. Okay, how long it takes you to go somewhere is how far you're going divided by how fast you're going there. So the total time is going to equal T1 plus T2 or the time it takes to go upstream and the time it takes to go downstream, right? So T1, that's going to equal, let's say that's, uh, that's her going upstream, T1 equals her going upstream. So that's going to be her distance, which is six miles, which is going upstream, which is going against the, uh, the current. She's going six miles upstream at a rate of her average speed, which is C, or sorry, it's, it's four, sorry. She's going at an average speed of four, minus the current. That's the rate. The rate of her going upstream is how fast that she can go, which is four miles per hour, minus the current pushing against her. That's her average rate when she's going upstream. And now plus the T2, uh, that T2 is, how, is the uh, time it takes her to go downstream. So that's going to be the distance, which is six miles downstream. All that over uh, her average speed, which is four, plus the current. If you're going downstream, the current's pushing you along as well. So the total uh, time will take you to go downstream, or the rate that you're going downstream is going to be how fast you can, you can go average, uh, on average, plus the current pushing against you. So that's when we get 6 over 4 plus C, and why the rate is 4 plus C. And what we're going to do now is we need to... Um, we need to simplify this out. We need to solve for C. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply by our LCD, which in this case is 4 minus C times 4 plus C. We're going to multiply every term in this problem by the LCD. So 4 minus C times 4 plus C multiplied by 4 will equal 6 times 4 minus C 4 plus C all over 4 minus C plus 6 times 4 minus C times 4 plus C all over that 4 plus C. And the reason we do that is because we multiply everything by the LCD, you get rid of the denominator in all the terms. So what we're left with is this 4 minus C, or rather it's going to be 4 times 4 minus C times 4 plus C, is a difference of squares, is a, um, the factored out for, uh, portion, or the factored out form, sorry, of a difference of squares. So we get 16 minus c squared. That will equal 6 times 4 plus c, which will be 24 plus 6c, plus 6 times 4 minus c, since so these went away. So that's 24 minus 6c. So when we do this, uh, we end up getting 4 uh, times 16. We're going to distribute this out as well. We're going to get 64 minus 4c squared. This 6c and minus 6c cancel out. And 24 plus 24 is 48. So we're going to solve this out. We're going to minus uh, 64 on both sides. Negative 4c squared equals negative 16. Divide each side by negative 4. C squared equals um, C squared equals four. So C equals plus or minus two. 
Give me a second. I think I'm reading this wrong. No, sorry, I'm doing that right. It is C equals plus or minus 2. Uh, you can't have a current of negative 2. That doesn't really make much sense. So C equals 2. All right. And uh, this is a very, very long video. It's already over 45 minutes long. Um, but hopefully this helps. And that's it for the video, guys.